right. I am joined by Tobias Kohler, right? That's Kohler? cool. Yeah. Hi, Jason. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Tobias is the group director of systems and commerce for Ruby Hotels, coming to us from Leipzig, Germany. Did I pronounce that right? Well, um, it's called uh, Leipzig, and Leipzig. I guess I think there's also an English name. It's called Lipsia, I think. <laughs> I just recently yeah. moved here, so okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hey, before we get started, I just want everyone to notice Tobias's background, how organized it is. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> well, thank you. And then my background. <laughs> well, <laughs> just... come on, it looks very good as well. Americans, Americans. Anyway, uh, so let's talk about your experience over the pandemic. How have you been? Well, yeah, so much happened over the last year. It, it felt like five years, I think. Um, so we had so many plans with Ruby um, to grow, to open new hotels, to grow our tech stack, etc. cetera. And um, yeah, after we realized how long this uh, pandemic will occupy us, so we had to change and we had to yeah, adapt, prioritize and yeah, find ways to solve this and work around. And yeah, it's it's been quite a ride and uh, quite frankly, also very exhausting for, for the most of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, so quickly tell us about uh, Ruby. Yeah, of course. So um, with our lean luxury approach, we offer our guests outstanding value for money. <laughs> oh, it's totally marketing. <laughs> but, yeah. hey, that's but okay. not only that, <laughs> it's basically a unique place with character and soul. So um, we like to connect our guests with people from um, within the city they visit. Um, currently, we operate eight hotels in Germany, Austria and the UK. And there are another three openings coming this year and another five to 10 over the next, the course of the next five years. So um, yeah, lean luxury, but that's our philosophy. Um, basically means for us, uh, we offer um, an experience that's luxurious, but also affordable. So we are prioritizing certain things and streamline our operations with a centralized approach. So you will not find a finance, marketing and reservations department in each hotel. This is totally centralized in our corporate uh, office in Munich. Um, and therefore we can offer our guests what matters to us and to them the most. So what we see as very important is a great location, high quality room fittings, and of course a great design to an affordable price. That's, that's really. <laughs> So what does lean luxury mean from your perspective, back office, tech stack? What's that look like? Well, of course, yeah, we, we're having a very close look at our processes. So before we do anything, we have a look at how does a process look like in the reservation department? I don't know. We, um, uh, we question ourselves um, regularly and uh, try to improve the processes um, and think about how can we maybe automate things? How can we digitalize um, processes to make life easier for our yeah, internal customers, uh, but also for our external customers, like, you know, at the end, our guests um, to, to have a great experience. And um, that's what we're currently um, uh, yeah, having a close look in questioning basically everything <laughs> again. So we have had a, quite a ride behind us um, because we switched um, the PMS over the last year. And um, yeah, the, the new opportunity, op opportunities arise. And now we, we want to um, uh, conquer the next steps. Um, but most things are usually done in the back office. So basically things the guests never really see, they, don't, they will never uh, see how organized our finance department is basically um, we don't even touch um, uh, invoices after guests depart they they are sent to them automatically and um, also um, getting the money um, from them is um, highly automated and most of the time it works <laughs> <laughs> So how about uh, any, tell us about some of the adjustments you've had to make in your role. So, yeah, um, well, 
my role didn't change much over the last year. Um, I always was responsible for the systems. However, we, we had some different plans. We planned a website relaunch. We planned a lot more um, to, to launch over the course of the last year. Um, but at the beginning, we were um, yeah, confronted with this pandemic and soon realized, hey, we all have to work from home. And um, so we, well, also my role more and more changed into kind of a change manager, helping people to help process this, this new environment, help them to start working from home better. We were lucky because we um, started a pilot with a yeah, new work um, approach where we uh, tested new tools and um, we just decided to roll them out to everybody and learn on the go. And um, that's what kept me busy um, trying to adapt, trying to find out what people really can work with, uh, what really um, helps them to get their job done, to meet um, and not to work too much, actually, um, because we also realized um, now at the home office, you, you get up, you sit in front of the computer and um, you work too late and um, it's not easy to take a break and yeah that's where we also realized we 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 need to force people to to take breaks <laughs> <laughs> yeah i understand that so um you're, i'm sure you're paying attention to what your peers have been doing over the past 11 12 months um i mean how do you think the pandemic has changed uh, a hotel stack uh you know whether it's a large independent or you know maybe you know five or six or 20 or 50 Sure. So what I see and what I also learned from other hoteliers when we talk to each other, uh, a lot of them uh, try to adapt to the situation with changing their um, yeah, check-in process um, most of the time. So they, they try to digitize it, um, try to limit the actual touch points with the guests. So um, not that people meet too often um, and try to... Um, get things done um, with a mobile or digital check-in kiosk. Um, so um, this is what what struck me the most is happening in the market at the moment. And what I also see from um, suppliers that people basically only ask for a digital check-in um, and digital register forms, etc. what's necessary if you check in and at some years vacations. Yeah. Advice. Uh, we're still going through this thing. Um, I don't know, is Germany on a lockdown or are you guys? Oh, yes. And yeah. I just got the push message because our government uh, basically is still meeting, but um, they prolonged the lockdown till 7th of March. Um, and now, yeah, we're, we're all in it. Uh, it's the same in Austria where we have the hotel and, of course, UK as well um, with the uh, mutants going around there and they soon going to or they are already here in Europe um, continental Europe as well so we're um, it's crazy times and what we can only see um, or what I can advise people to is talk to each other and learn from each other and um, I don't know I, I think I didn't speak to so uh, it's well I sp spoke to so many other hoteliers and people with the same role of the, over the course of the last month, which helped me a lot to also um, yeah, get over the situation and find new approaches to different topics. And uh, I can only recommend for you guys to, to do this at the same way. I mean, we need to support each other in these times. And even if we don't, um, if, if not yet, when? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. That's some good advice from Tobias. Thank you, sir, for joining me. I very much appreciate it. Thank you very much, Jason. You bet.